Before watching this video, please read the disclaimer text carefully. This episode is for tutorial and educational purposes only. Welcome to episode number 3 of our new series, Financial Analysis Techniques, Global Case Studies. Our topic today is the Common Size Analysis Cash Flow. Let us start. We will apply the same method as the previous episode. We will state the cash flow statement items as a percent of net sales or revenue. Let's apply that in our first practical case study, the global company business. But before discussion the common size analysis, you must first be aware of the accounting standards and concepts of the cash flow statement. Hear your very good stuff by Sylvia that posted on her YouTube channel and CPD Box website. IAS 7 Statement of Cash Flows, Summary 2020 How to Prepare Statement of Cash Flows in 7 Steps, The Basic Method of Making CF Consolidated Statement of CF with Foreign Currencies Leases IFRS 16 in the Statement of Cash Flows IAS 7 As you can see, I have used the 5 years comma presentation method on the left are the last recent five years figures as it has presented in the cash flow statements. And on the right side, we will calculating the common size analysis of cash flow statement. On the right, I have added the five years revenue figures as it has presented on the income statements. I will divide each item of the cash flow statement by the revenue or net sales. But don't forget to press F4 for sales B4 to T4 of the revenue figures. Now you can copy the formula of J4 to N4 to the rest of sales as I have did for the rest of the table. But sure that you will best it as a special formula only. As you can see, I have used the icon sets conditional formatting to support meaningful presentation. To know how to apply this formatting of icon sets, kindly watch our first episode, Dynamic Shapes and Formatting Effects, in the other series of Excel for FB and A and cost management. Now to know the concept of the common size cash flow, let us take a quick look at the last row. By ranking this row figures, it may seem that the most higher cash and the cash equivalent is that as at year end of 2020. You can see, with almost 3 billion 63 euros, but it's fake indicator if, we, if I will compare to the other year's figures. Again, if I will compare this figure to other years, it will be a fake indicator. Why? It could not necessarily mean that the company has performed well in this year comparing to the other year because it has the most higher cash flow. The fairest and the meaningful indicator is to know how much this figure represents as a percentage of the revenue itself. For example, you can see that in year 2018 was the most higher cash and the cash equivalent as a percentage of the revenue. Can you see? Also by applying it to row number four, you may find that year 2020 was the higher profit for the year. 
But again, it's not a meaningful indicator. By, apply, by applying the common size analysis, you will find year 2018 was the higher profitable year, not year 2020. Now, you will be able to understand and will explain the performance of the company by applying the same concept to the different sections of the common size cash flow statement for each item of the common size cash flow statement and its implication for the business. Now you can analyze where and how this cash was generated. I have also applied the waterfall analysis to support the performance analysis of this company, Fistis. By breaking down the cumulative effect of each cash inflow and outflow, by sequentially introduced it as positive or negative values. I have started by the cash and the cash equivalent as at 1st of January, then ending by the same at the year end 2022. Again, you can watch our episode number 9, Price Volume Mix Analysis and Waterfall. As you see, the higher cash outflow was from investing activities, and the higher cash inflow was from financing activities. Now you will, you will need to further investigate this indicator by applying the common size analysis percentages. For example, year 2018 was the higher percentage of cash outflow from investing activities as a percentage of the net sales or revenue. Look at the percentage of the item of purchase of financial investments. It was 4.2% of the net sales. But on the other hand, the higher cash inflow from the investing activities was in year 2019. Again, look at the percentage of the disposal of financial investments. It was 4.5% of the net sales. I have applied the same concepts to another two global case studies, Siemens Energy and Ebert Roller. But take into consideration that as end of September year 2019 and the first of October year 2018, Siemens Energy was no legally separate group for which consolidated financial statements had to be prepared according to IFRS 10. So I have applied just four years common size analysis. In other words, I have used just the last four years data. And the four Iberola company, the third case study, I have just used the main or key items of the cash flow statements. In other words, the main cash inflow and outflow activities. Now, can you answer the following questions? Which percentage can be a sign or indicator that this company has performed well? And in which year? And the reason for that? Does the company apply concerted, concerted or moderate or risky cash outflow and investment policies again in which year and the reason for that? I will try to arrange a free workshop to discuss all these questions and more. Just follow me on LinkedIn and YouTube. Now let's see a simple advice by another global expert James Rimmer. James has provided the following simple advice. For Siemens, just as an example, a few things jump out to me. A large fall in inventories, what should the right holding level be? Amortization, depreciation, and impairments are much higher than additions to intangible assets and property, plant and equipment which suggests cash is not being made available to fully replace capital as it depreciates. 
This is better looked at over the four years which shows a considerable gap. Ideally you want to see continued investments in capital assets. Finally, in the sheet RE industry or renewable industry, another way of using the common size analysis. I have compared the data analysis of the three case study. For tutorial and educational purposes, I have used just key items of cash flow activities of the statement. Almost like our waterfall analysis that we have applied before. As you can see in column B, I have used the most recent year result of year 2022. In column Q, I have used the average ratio for each company. Finally, in column R, I have used the average ratio for the renewable energy industry. By calculating the average of the three company case study for year 2022, I have considered this as the industry ratio or indicator. This just for tutorial and education purposes, but in practice, practical, you should calculate this average for 10 companies or 7 companies in the same industry, at least 3 companies, it's not enough to be a meaningful indicator. Also below the data of each company, you will find the percentage change between the beginning and the end of the period, net cash flow, introduced as positive or negative percentage. Now, would you like additional resources on how to interpret the cash flow statement? Here you are a good resource by Andres Lundberg. Cash is king, but how do you improve it? I will put the link to the post on the comments, the comments on the LinkedIn post itself. Again, our episode today is just a simple example of using the common size analysis for tutorial and educational purposes. In the next episode, I will discuss another common size analysis, the balance sheet of another global case study, but this time in another industry. See you.